Hi everyone, uh, we have prepared, we're preparing this little video recording uh, with me, Christian Camilleri and of course, Joseph Camilleri, um, as by way of a report on the conversation assignments that we were all set, um, that were to be completed by Sunday the 29th of May. You may recall we were given a little bit of an extension, a few days grace period to get some of those last conversations in. Before hearing from Joe on, on uh, giving a sort of an overview of how people went with those conversations, let me remind you of what we were asked to do. So we were asked over a period of about 10 days to two weeks to um, seek out and have conversations with a number of different people for around 20 minutes. The conversation was to cover the following issues. How closely have we, have we been following what's going on in the Ukraine? What's our take on the media we have access to? Do they give us a reasonably accurate picture of the conflict? What got it going in the first place and how it's unfolding? Can something positive come out of this conflict? And is the conflict likely to affect us in any way? Can we contribute in any way to a resolution of great power conflict? Now, while I've obviously framed that in the form of a few questions, they, we were not meant to be interviewing um, our conversationalists. We were meant to be engaging in as natural a, and free flowing a conversation as was possible. And just a free and uh, informal exchange of ideas on these topics. So Joe, having now sort of reminded everybody, I understand there were quite a few responses. We had a good take up of that assignment. You, you must have worked your way through quite a number. Roughly how many did you, did you receive? I think we received somewhere around uh, the mid 50s, probably around 55, perhaps 56 or seven. Uh, I haven't made the final count, but uh, mid, to, mid to high 50s. Ah, that's great. That's great. So let's get right into it. Let me ask you a little bit about uh, how those conversations went as reported by the participants themselves. Yes, well, uh, the reports of the conversation varied, of course. Some were very short. Uh, some were very matter of fact. This is what uh, the issues we discussed and what people thought. Uh, some went into reflection about what had transpired. Uh, some were in, went into it in considerable detail, as much as two or three pages. And I must tell you, uh, it was for me quite a rich experience because what that did is it um, exposed me uh, to a very rich array of um, people's think thoughts and feelings about this particular issue, namely the Ukraine conflict, that otherwise I wouldn't have had access to. Yeah. Uh, generally, uh, the participants, as a broad generalization, were satisfied by what they did, by the quality of the conversations. Each participant initiated between two and five conversations. Um, some lasted a few minutes. Uh, many more went for the 20 suggested, the suggested 20 minutes, and quite a few much longer, in some cases, an hour or more each. So it varied widely in terms of the length of the conversation. The general description that our participants who initiated these conversations, the general description they gave of the conversations were, and I quote their words, stimulating, useful, informative, lively. Those words were used again and again. Some added some other words, including respectful, uh, mutually respectful, relaxed, lively, fruitful, detailed, and in one or two cases, sustained. All right, so that gives you an idea of how the participants felt about the conversations they initiated. Now, in terms of the discussion or the conversation about the Ukraine conflict, a good number of participants knew more about the issue than the people they were having the conversations with. In others, a lot less, uh, the people they were 
uh, discussing the issue with knew quite a bit more than they did. Uh, and that makes it very interesting. In, in other words, in some cases, um, the, uh, our participant was in a position in relation to the particular issue in a position of some authority, and um, in other cases, the roles were reversed. Uh, many of the participants took pains to listen and made a point of registering the fact that they uh, kept themselves on a leash. They didn't want to intrude too much of their opinions into the conversation. A few said that they found this difficult and they were just so keen and eager to, to vent forth about what they thought, uh, but at different stages restrained themselves. Uh, a few people went to considerable pains to people uh, to put the people they were conversing with uh, at ease. Now, I want to mention one particular case which I found wonderful. Uh, one of the participants in, in these cases, the conversations went for an hour or more. And she, because it was a she, did not start off, uh, what do, do you think about the conflict, mm. et cetera, et cetera. No, because the elections were at the time of the, of the Australian elections, federal elections, she, they opened up about that, what they thought, the result, what they were hopeful for, what they were dissatisfied with, what were the issues then, and gradually, with skill, <laughs> uh, she brought in the question at hand. And uh, it was seamless, it was highly informative, they knew a lot, they could make connections between the Ukraine conflict and the potential conflict in future that might involve China, perhaps Taiwan, who knows. Uh, so it was obviously a very fruitful conversation. A few found it difficult to keep the conversation going. There were some awkward silences. Uh, uh, and in a few cases, but very, very few, a feeling that the other person would rather <laughs> be anywhere but engaged in that conversation. Sure. Sure. Either because they didn't feel comfortable about the issue or they were not used to having such discussions, not clear. So that gives you, I think, a rough picture of roughly how the conversations went. Joe, was there any, thank you for that, was there any um, sense from the reports you received of who the people were, um, not from our group, we know who those people were, but who they sought out for conversation. So for instance, I know from personal acquaintance that um, one of the people who submitted uh, their assignment had conversations with their hairdresser while they were having their hair done. Um, yes. In other cases, it was with um, a tradesperson. And in other cases, it was obviously with a close friend. Did you get any sense of the the range of people that were sought out for these conversations or was that not really re uh, revealed in the reports? Oh, no, quite a lot did reveal it. Uh, primarily, there were two groups, I think. Primarily friends, either close friends or people, uh, let's say neighbours, for example, or uh, people that they work with, mm. that they have some ongoing almost daily connection with, there were the two big clusters. There were a few other cases of people perhaps not so much, oh, and people at home, partners, um, perhaps uh, I think children in a few cases, adult children. Uh, th they were the three main areas by and large. Mm. Uh, I did forget to, to mention that in a two or three, perhaps four cases, uh, the conversation ended by the person or persons uh, involved in it saying, that was great, let's do it again, whatever we do, let's keep the conversation going. Uh, that's icing on the cake. Yeah, that's pretty good. Mm. What pointers do you think there are for future conversations coming out of what you've read over the last week or so? Well, I think they flow to a large extent from the reflections of the participants. Um, some felt that they would like to have had a few more skills in making the conversation flow as naturally as possible. Some said that. 
um, some found it uh, awkward when the conversation was going into a territory where there was clear disagreement uh, of analysis or uh, interpretation of what was happening in the Ukraine. Uh, quite a few said it's very important to understand the other person's point of view. Uh, one person said, and I stress it, that it's important to understand not only what they think, but their mental and emotional state. Quite a few people, quite a few, let's say four or five or six, were speaking with people who were not at ease, who had some major crisis, perhaps an illness, someone close to them, preoccupied with some major issue or issues, and that obviously intrudes into the conversation, how to handle those kinds of situations. Mm. Um, uh, and, and as one was saying, it's very important uh, to try and ma uh, understand, make sense of how the other person ticks, which of course can't be done uh, very quickly or in the space of one conversation. Mm. What, what, if I might jump in, what, yes. what pro so some people I know mentioned it would be uh, good to have a bit more skilling, a bit more training, particularly, I think, and I think we've all felt this, when the conversation takes a turn where it's a, quite apparent that the, the people involved in it are coming from at it from different standpoints. So it has the potential at that point to become quite a fractious conversation. Um, do you think there, there are... Um, we might uh, set up some sort of tra further training for that kind of, uh, or skilling sessions for that kind of very difficult conversation, particularly when one of the parties to the conversation has some kind of familial or emotional stake in the issue. For instance, family in the Ukraine or-, um, or Absolutely, like yes. That. And there were a few cases like that. Yes, definitely. I think there are several issues uh, where um, some, you can call it skilling, or some thinking through of the difficulties and the challenges of, get, of uh, uh, ensuring the different kinds of conversation proceed smoothly. Uh, I think there were probably, let's say, up to half a dozen issues uh, a couple of which I've already mentioned uh, that um, uh, require uh, uh, some uh, uh, some skilling, some uh, further work. Yeah. Um, one is it's not enough to have the conversation. There needs to be a good deal of reflection after the conversation as to what went well, what was not so well, how could it be done better? There was a good deal of that, but I think uh, more of that is needed. Uh, useful, constructive reflection on what has occurred. Um, people, because, and this was partly my fault in setting a conversation around a particular issue uh, with particular questions. And I suppose people felt, oh, I dare not come back uh, without having actually posed those questions. Mm -hmm. In real life, uh, it should be possible to allow the conversation to drift, even drift out of topic uh, from time to time, just to make it much more comfortable. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a, a, a very complex balance to be struck between politeness and truthfulness. You want to be respectful, uh, but you also have to own up to where you stand, how you read a particular situation. Mm. Uh, if there is oversimplification, and that happened with quite a few conversations, uh, people, uh, quite a number of the people uh, who were involved in conversations were absolutely transfixed by the so-called Putin factor in the Ukraine conflict as if one man, however important, uh, really is the decisive consideration in how a conflict, its history and its current, uh, uh, and, its cur and the way it's currently unfolding can be put down simply to one man. Uh, to find ways in which the conversation can go a bit more deeply than uh, uh, what this or that prime minister or president is saying or doing at any given time. 
Um, the other thing that I think we need to give some thought to is that, of course, the conversation can be one-to-one -one or one-to-two, but there are useful ways in what people in which way people can bring a group together and of course that's exactly what conversation at the crossroads is in the middle of trying to do to establish ongoing uh, semi-structured conversations with conversation groups being established around particular issues we need to bring that to the fore obviously and it might take some more explanation to do that and finally the big issue for me that emerges from uh, reading all these reports mentioned by number not by all by any means is in relation to the la uh, two questions if you like the role that media play in the positions we adopt you could just about say uh, as a bit of an oversimplification. Tell me what media you follow, and I'll tell you what positions you hold on, on this or that issue. Mm -hmm. uh, and therefore, there needs to be a reflection on what, what are the media. And it's not just saying social media. The question then is, where do the social media outlets that people use get their information and their interpretations from? And that becomes quite a complex issue, which needs to be unpassed. But yeah. the, probably the more important, the last one, is this. A lot of people said, but what can I do? Mm. It's hopeless. It, the issue is too big, too difficult, too far away. I count for little. To all intents and purposes, I count for nothing. Now, that needs to become the subject of a big conversation, uh, because, of course, there is agency, there is potency, not in lone individuals doing a little thing somewhere as Robinson Crusoe's, but together with others. So the question of what uh, collective collaborative uh, engagement might look like and how that can be intruded into conversation about any kind of issue, be it uh, uh, housing affordability, Ukraine, or mental health or something else. Uh, what can collaborative engagement look like and how can that be intruded into conversation? So these are very important issues and uh, we should find ways. We'll be we're going to be discussing them, of course, uh, in the last uh, week of the seven week series, but beyond that, we need to find additional ways of coming to grips with some of these very challenging questions, which are critical to the success of conversation, particularly if it has some kind of social change focus uh, to it. Thank you. Well, I think that's a pretty good synopsis and overview of what you must have um, received uh, and worked through over the past few weeks. So we look forward to that final session and hopefully getting the opportunity to tie a few of these threads together. But thanks again for your time. I hope this has been valuable to those people who did participate and even those who didn't manage to get a report in but are with us in spirit. So um, we'll sign up here and look forward to continuing the conversation. Thanks again. Thank you, Christian. Thank you.